Trailer Talk TV. Today we've got Stefan from Schenectady. Stefan, thanks for coming into the office. Yeah, thanks for having me. Today, Steph is going to talk about the uh, Schenectady product and um, exactly what it is. Um, and it's pretty interesting for publishers and buyers. So, Stefan, um, let's first talk about what you guys do. Could you just give us an overview? Yeah, um, we're, we're a technology company buying of non standard, high impact, um, what uh, commonly referred to as custom integrations. Yeah. Um, mainly via real time bidding. Okay. It's, it's uh, you know, programmatic is one part of it, but mm. programmatic means only automated. Like we're focused on real time bidding, yeah. every impression bid on, yeah. uh, and at scale. That's yeah. really the thing. That this is one of the uh, of the big issues with you know non standard formats. Mm. It's like the scale is hard to achieve, both from the supply side and the demand side. So it's kind of like a home page takeover. Home page time. takeover would be you know we're actually in general format agnostic. Like yeah. anything that's non standard, meaning mm. IAB like rectangle leaderboard, mm. you know anything that has a size that's inside content mm. is kind of considered standard. Um, we're really focusing on everything that's non-standard. Yeah. So we're we're trying to to find um, methods to describe what non-standard means and how non-standard can be standardized, <laughs> just in a way of how it can be deployed. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about these uh, high-impact non-standardized uh, units. Um, how does the process work in terms of how a buyer buys? Uh, a publisher's inventory or sure. something yeah. inventory. Maybe I just start with how it's done sure. right now, how sure. it's done outside of RTB. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's called custom integration. Okay. So we have a high impact custom integration. So this is basically the way that it's handled still today. It's, yeah. it's a manual process. Mm. So we have a publisher that has a website. On that website, you have your standard ad units, mm. rectangle, leaderboard, skyscraper. But uh, if this is your, your monitor, um, the, the trend is that the monitors are getting bigger. And most websites are still kind of you know, targeting the, the older browsers to be safe. So there's uh, usually you have like a, a gutter space on the side. It's yeah. really unused space. It's space that's out of page, out yeah. of content. And it's really not used. Sometimes you see just some design elements or something yeah. like that. But that's really where what traditionally high impact comes in. That's mm. where our name comes from. We started with background skins. Yeah. That was kind of like the, the first um, you know, emergence of, of um, the, the homepage takeovers. Mm. So how this is done right now is today, you know, you have a publisher, like you know, a single publisher. Um, then you have a buyer, you know, the buyer has a creative. And what they do is they pick a publisher, you know, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Yeah. They call them up, RFP process, insertion yeah. order, their creative Messy. department, you know, looks at the website, designs something specific to the site. You know, the, there's, uh, you know, a certain, um, you know, a certain price is pre-negotiated, mm -hmm. you know, it runs maybe for a week on the entire yeah. homepage, every impression is served. Mm -hmm. And after that, really, the creative dies because I only worked on the site. Yeah. And uh, it, it's kind of like, it's very manual, very time and cost consuming process. Yeah. So actually, even though these homepage takeovers have like, uh, you know, usually high CPMs, obviously, um, they have, you know, much higher impact and, and better performance CTRs and so forth. Um, but it's, you know, a lot of the budget, like up to 30, 40% is really lost in the process, just mm. the manual process, all the people that are involved. And, and obviously the time is an issue too. And then after this is a one-time transaction, you know, then they might have another custom creative on a different website. So this all, seems to be an outdated process yeah. to us. Hit and miss. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, you know, this does not take advantage of, of any of the new programmatic, mm. you know, real-time bidding mm. um, things you can do. You know, mainly the ability to bid on impressions instead of having a block of, you know, of, of pre-bought impressions. Um, you know, and, and doing this at scale is really what this is all about. Yeah. You know, you should not be able to have a custom creative that only served on one website for a certain period of time. You should have a creative that you can like, you know, buy on wherever you want to buy, wherever your audience is. Yeah. So there's a, a number of issues, obviously, why this has not been done before. What are those issues? <laughs> the, the issues are what we just described. It's, it's very hard for, for the, um, the publisher to put these creatives on their site. Yeah. Um, because it's not standard. It doesn't have a specific site. Mm. It's like, it's custom, you know, and this, every website is slightly different. Yeah. Some are wider, some are smaller, some are responsive. Mm. So that all means that, you know, every time like the code has to be adjusted, you know, like, a, yeah. uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, the technical people need to like, you know, manually place the code there, you know, so for the very labor by. intensive process, very labor intensive. creation, information, implementation, Absolutely. execution. Yes. So tell me how you 
you guys are kind of fixing this sort of process. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we, we try to come up with, with ways to, to make this tradable and to automate this. Yeah. So that's really what it's all about. So on the supply side, there's a couple of issues that need to be solved. One is um, the scalability. Mm. So we do not want, let's say you're, you're a network and you have like 500 publishers. Yeah. So even if you do it, you know, premium programmatic, you know, where you do have like a custom tag, you still have to, you know, send it to all your publishers, they need to install it. And it, it's still a very manual process. So we want to avoid that the publisher have to do anything. Mm. So since we are really dealing with out-of-page creative and, mm. and out-of-page units, we, we're not really touching the, the existing yeah. uh, creative in there. And, and it's purely it's incremental, by the way, because it's all you know, empty space and yeah. it's otherwise not, not monetized. Um, so we basically um, you know, have a way that we can remotely from the network level traffic our tag to the publisher okay. side. And there is, uh, th there's no defaults, no PSAs. So you know, if we're not really aiming to um, to fill every impression, that's kind of against the whole nature. Yeah. Um, because these high impact formats, they, they can be intrusive. You mm. know, they're, they're, mm. there's a reason why they have a, a higher impact. Mm. Um, so we want to make sure that the impressions, though, that, that can be sold and bought, you know, are, are truly um, viewable. You know, from a technology standpoint. Yeah. Um, so and basically, you want the ad to be seen. By yes, exactly. I want to make sure that you know that even like different browsers, for instance, right here in this example, you have like the gutter space. Yeah. But what happens if I resize the browser to yeah. this size? Right. All of a sudden, we don't have enough room here to sh to see the ad. So that should not be an impression that you buy your big and table you or something. If if the if the browser uh, resize that size. You won't serve that ad, or the yeah. What, what we do ad. is we do like a pre-auction detection. Yeah. So, for instance, the way that uh, expandables are handled to this day is, uh, you know, everything is done after the auction. Mm. You know, if you have a rectangle and uh, like a rich media buyer buys it with yeah. an expandable, he buys the impression, then sends his, you know, expandable unit, and then he might end up in an iframe, mm. or the browser might not be able to display flash or whatever it is. So they have to show a, like a, a backup static default. Mm. So that's not really a good way, especially for the even higher impact, you know, site yeah. formats and so forth. So what we do is every impression we actually check if this is a viewable impression. Yeah. You know we check the you know the, the screen resolution you know the browser size you know is, is flash present you know HTML5 support you know modern browsers mm. so that's all determined before the auction happens mm. and only if the impression is actually viewable then we write dynamically a call to the ad server that then opens up the impression mm. you know over R two B. But these high impact ads then the programmatic ads R two B enabled ads they've got high CPMs I mean they're 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 Top end of the of the uh, of the R two B ecosystem. Well, uh, yeah, obviously. I mean, that's a you know again, you have like a much larger canvas to work with. Yeah. You know, you can have you know animations, flash, video, yeah. and um, overlays as well. Seems like overlays, uh, floaters, rising stars. Yeah. You know, rising stars. That, that everyone's interested in them. Yeah. But um, you know, they're really hard to build, and yeah. they can really be traded um, via RTB. Mm. I mean, you see them only on like, you know, AOL or, or big networks that have, you know, that, that buy and managed, mm. you know, on their own platforms. So that shouldn't be the case. So we're, we're definitely supporting all the rising star formats, um, but we deploy them out of page. Okay. So it does not require, you know, that you actually place like a tag. Again, mm. it's manual. It's, you know, it sits somewhere in your content. You have to change the design. So we can deploy rising stars like, you know, a billboard, a push down goes above the site. Mm. You know, we can deploy film strips on the site, mm. you know, the sidekick. So all these work. Okay. And in terms of sort of a publisher, if I was a publisher now, how would I, how would I work with you guys? How do I get sort of the, that sort of... Uh, element on my page or how do I get people to buy? Sure. Yeah. So I mean, at the single public, again, we're like about scale, right? Mm. So we're mainly dealing with networks. Like we're trying to, to enable a large, you know, large supply network, yeah. like multiple sites, like yeah. hundreds of thousands of sites. Yeah. Like that's what, you know, where the scale is missing. Yeah. So of course, if there's a single publisher, you can just take our tag and put it on the page. Yeah. So that, that's the easy way, but that doesn't solve the scale. Like yeah. the scale is, I'm a network, I have a thousand publishers. Yeah. And all the sites have different Hundreds designs and precious. some resize, some are forums and stuff like that. So what, what you can do with, with um, our solution is you get a single tag that you can remotely distribute to all your publishers right. from the platform level. Yeah. So nothing needs to be actually manually deployed. Mm. So there's different ways how that can be done. But basically, the tag gets traffic from the platform mm. to the supply, then does all the checking, then opens up the impression for, for RTB. So if I was using someone like Amex as a Rubicon or Improve, I can go into the system and say, I want 
ten pound CPM for this for this? Is that is that how you can control the pricing and have? Oh yeah, there? that's a good question actually. So on the supply side, we actually let the, um, the the publishers control a lot of these things. Yeah. So obviously, a floor is is very important. Yeah. Like everyone needs a floor. Like you don't want to you know again. It's the goal is not to so, to sell every impression. Is to get a high, you know, high yeah. payout. Yeah. Like these formats are much higher CTRs, much higher conversion rates. So the price should be would be much higher. So instead of filling up the impression, you get a much higher CPM. Mm. But from the, it still makes a lot of sense for for the advertisers or the buyers because their conversions are so much higher. Yeah. And then you can control the price and through the platforms themselves effectively. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, and obviously, you know, another thing that uh, you know for the buy side. Um, it, it's something that hasn't really been done is uh, even if you do this one-to-one -one relationship and do a custom integration, yeah. you don't take advantage of any of the you know the, the targeting, the yeah, audience absolutely. buying, you know that you can do. So imagine this, you know, on like a homepage takeover like you see on Yahoo, but you yeah. can actually alter your creative, you know, retarget it, mm -hmm. you know, with with all the bells and whistles yeah. that you have. Optimize basically on on on, on what on the idea that you're getting back. A absolutely. Yeah. You know, localize, you know, yeah. different offers, you know, yeah. based on, you know, time your data, data. Yeah. time of that, everything that you can do with you know yeah. the standard IIDs you can do with the high end. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Um, and and obviously the the big ports are getting three or four hundred thousand pounds they must be worried that <laughs> that, that that waste is soon soon to be exposed. Yeah, I mean you know what we get a lot of, you know, from the supply side, especially the premium publisher, they ask us, look, we have a direct sales team, we don't need this, you know, mm -hmm. we were selling this stuff. It's, we don't see this um, replacing direct sales. More incremental. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, direct sales, there's a place for that. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's something to it that you have, you know, certain pre-negotiated price and stuff like that. But this is like a great secondary solution mm -hmm. for, for unsold, mm -hmm. you know, high impact impressions. Because mm -hmm. your sales team don't, you know, doesn't sell this all day long. Mm -hmm. So we actually believe once the market, you know, has like a, a lot more demand that, you know, people bid against each other, that mm -hmm. the prices, because the targeting is so much more sophisticated mm -hmm. and the, you know, the, the performance is so much higher, yeah. that the prices should actually be, you know, equal or higher than direct sales. Okay. Okay. There you have it. High impact or to be enabled uh, inventory. Stefan, thanks very much for coming in. Appreciate and it. That was Trader Talk TV. See you next week. Thank you.